first episode right here. Me, Max, and a mic. I've been waiting to do this for a long time. Mr. Everything, Max Slid, my best friend, tag team partner. That's Larry. me. Yeah, it's you, Larry. That's you. So excited. I've been waiting to sit down with you for a while. Obviously, me and you talk every day, every night, you know, best friends, that's what we do. But we talk all the time about, man, a lot of people would like to hear these stories. A lot of people would like to hear these adventures because to me and you, you know, it's an everyday type thing. But to the rest of the world, you know, your news, your front page news, you got signed to Impact Wrestling. You've been all over the United States of America wrestling. Uh, all this stuff, and people look at you, and you're not just that guy from Georgetown, Kentucky anymore. Now you are legendary Larry D, Impact Wrestling superstar. That's part of what we're going to talk about today is that adventure, getting to Impact Wrestling. Making right. an impact. That's it, making an impact. Yeah. It's not at Impact Wrestling, and unfortunately, you know, well, we're going to hear the story of how you left Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they get released from wrestling. They, you know, their time comes to an end before they're ready. You actually walked away, and that's going to be a big part of the story is that. I coach, I coach him, just thinking about yeah. it when you said that. You're right, yep. yeah. You, uh, you have always blazed your own path, and that is something that, you know, I've always looked up to you for is the fact that you'll see a vision. You'll see where you want to go, not just in wrestling, but in life. And you will just change directions on dime and you'll say, this is what I want, and this is how I'm gonna get there. And a lot of times you'll have people that'll be like, that's crazy, that's insane. Why wouldn't you just stay in your comfort zone? Why wouldn't you just, you know, collect a paycheck? Why wouldn't you just live on the name that you've already created? But uh, you know, you're never satisfied. Just take in what is given to you. You always want to earn that next big thing. And uh, it's going to be a really exciting adventure that we talk about. This is part one of, like you said, it's making an impact. Uh, so what led you to think that the journey of Larry D needed to go to impact this? Well, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't know where it was going to go. I just know that it needed to go beyond Lawrenceburg, Georgetown, Frankfurt, and Lexington, and then Hazard, you know, uh, and, and I think it took, you know, we spoke, I mean, we talked, you know, it took, I think it took my first marriage ended, you know, at that point, I was just every 40 mile, you know, superstar, and, and then when my marriage ended, I knew that I just had myself and two kids, and if I was going to do this wrestling, you know, I knew that I had to make it the next level or make it profitable for the time that I have to invest in this. And, and it was it was a wake up call. And, and once I got once my once my man left, I knew it was real because I just had myself and my two kids. And if I'm going to continue to do this, then I better do it the right way. Yeah. And that's where it really uh, that's where it really turned on. But I didn't quite know how to get there. Yeah, I can remember like. Everybody said Larry D is the best wrestler in the state of Kentucky. It didn't matter which company it was, whether it was uh, MWA or you know just insert any local wrestling organization. If it was in the state of Kentucky, we gotta have Larry D. Larry D's the you man. Know, you know the biggest compliment insult I ever got. And this is not like not I'm not mad at him offending me. It was but it was like a compliment insult. Was I was in Moorhead, Kentucky, and you know the athletic commission. And, and, and he walks in and he says, man, he's like, I see you. Because, you know, when the fair season was really big mm -hmm. back then, uh, man, I see you five nights a week at these fair shows, and now I see you. It's like, you're the Hulk Hogan of Kentucky. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I mean, and like to him, it was like, I understand, like, I, I genuinely, like, to you're, a you're putting me over. I appreciate it. I get that, but like, like inside, my dad was like, what do you do? Are you, are you content with being the best wrestler in Kentucky? You know, and, and bless them, everyone, everyone chose OVW to be the path to the next level. And, you know, I've always been against the grain, man. You said it a couple minutes ago, it's like, you know, you're, you're in your, why don't you stay in your comfort zone? Why do you do that? Well, you know, I stay in my comfort zone until it gets uncomfortable and then I find some other comfort zone and I just put them all together and just, I know that my house is And that's just the way that I always work out. 
Yeah, you know what they say. They say when a man becomes complacent and he settles, he never gets any better. Uh, you're only as good as your you know, next match, your last right. match. You only get better working with people better than you. If you look around a locker room or you look around an atmosphere anywhere, whether it's work, wrestling, life, and you go, yeah. I've got it all figured out. I've got everything that I could ever want. You're probably content, and once you're content, you're not going to get any better. You're going to just stay that, you know, big it's fish, the same, small Yes, fish. it's the same thing in life. I love I flew to the door. You know, that was my first love, obviously. You know, I've, I've been through a lot in my life, but there's one thing that's been consistent, and that's progress. You know, and, and just, just walking around this and going, this is completely changed your life. It's how you look at life. Do I want to stay here or am I content? You know, in, in this in this chase, I guess you would say, was I content in Lawrenceburg or Lexington? No. You know, I, I was at a crossroads in my life that I needed to either leave this behind, the, the, the childhood dream, I need to leave that behind and take up to these two kids and go work 40 hours a week and, and this, that, and another. Uh, and, and, and there's just something in me that just, that just knew that I wasn't meant to be a, a welder. I knew that I was meant to be a professional wrestler and come out of water. And I knew that uh, OBW was probably against the grain. Everyone went there. I liked to be that way. And once I decided to take that and travel that, that drive, it was a tough road. You know, I've seen the evolution of Larry D. People talk about the way that evolution works. So, you know, I can remember seeing a guy that broke into the business, and I remember he had the long, stringy hair, and the, like, orange and yellows and reds, and you were calling yourself the original teenage dirtbag, uh, Larry D., and you were coming out to uh, the song, and, you know, you were doing moonsaults, and you were doing flips, and you were walking the rope, and it was very impressive for a guy your size. But it was also, you know, you weren't really going anywhere outside of that type of level. Then I remember that you came, uh, you know, the MWA, and you became like a PIT. And it was kind of like a little joke gimmick to where you wear the cover bun and the tie, and you were basically the lackey to Scott Hayes, who was doing it. Because the had absolutely nothing to do. You know what I mean? There was nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was 400 pounds, very young. I didn't eat right. I didn't work out. Thought that I was doing pro wrestling the right, correct way by showing up and being early and shaking hands with two fingers or whatever the hell we had to do back then. Uh, but I just don't think there was anything for me. They liked me. I think they knew that maybe one day there might be, but I, I just feel like, like just to get get them off his back, I feel like, well, let's bring Larry in and just so y'all got to shut the hell up about this guy from Georgetown. That, you know, that, that's how I feel it went. And, yeah. And, and I knew going again against the grain, you know, anywhere else against the grain. I knew that that point was going to be very difficult unless I'm going to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. And the thing is, is that eventually, well, you know, I was talking about the evolution of it all. We talked about, you know, the teenage dirt bag, and then here's this PIT. Well, I think it really started to roll in the direction that led you to the point that you are at now. Uh, when you started doing the legendary Larry D gimmick and you started doing, uh, you know, you started having the matches, the feature matches. You know matches. what really, you know what really turned out that though, you know really what it was, if you, you would remember, uh -huh. is that Chris would send the boys down to Nashville for Bert. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and, 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 and again, this is, you know, here we are in this little 40 mile radius of what we think wrestling should be. And, and we went down, it was me and Ray the Bear still, and we went to Nashville, I seemed like, man, this is a little bit more organized than what I'm used to, even for coming to Christmas. And once we got down there, I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I want to do shows like this more now. So I feel like that was just that little kick in the ass to, to want to improve and, and evolve. So from there, I seen guys who were in better shape. You know, I seen guys that, that I knew were bigger, but I haven't seen them in a while, and they've lost weight. So now I knew it's like, what if? What if? You put just a little effort in, you know, and, 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 and before I got to really make the gym turn myself, I find out that my blood pressure was so high at 21 years old that I was taking time bomb and walk across the, the parking lot and, and fall out. That's what the doctor told me. So the next day, you know, 
I went and got a gym membership and never turned back. And you know, that that's where like that's where like it was nothing I'd done at Mount Sterling, Kentucky. The only thing I did at Mount Sterling, Kentucky was just show up and be a good hand and do what I was told. But you know, I didn't really get that until like I faced I mean you could die at twenty one years old because your blood pressure was so high. And then just in the thought of working out for my health, I seen in, in, in the benefits of a wrestling of course, and that's when I went from the little black PIT to like you say, legendary letter D. I've been there with Jerry Lawler. You know? Yeah, you had uh, big matches. Jerry and King Lawler, Abyss, Chris Harris, Samoa Joe, uh, all of the names from, you know, obviously Jerry Lawler is the biggest name probably in this area of all time. Uh, then oh, uh, Lexington, Kentucky area. Uh, Lexington, yeah, course, uh, yeah. Kentucky, Tennessee area. Like Jerry Lawler, there wasn't a bigger name that you could probably headline a show with. My dad was on fire. Yeah. yeah. yeah and uh, you worked with Lawler, what, four times? Uh, three or four times. You know, I mean, that one time I, I it was, it was with Tommy Gunn and Scott. Uh, and then I worked two other singles and maybe a tag. I, I, I have to check on the tag, but I know we worked two other singles in Richmond. Yeah. You know, so I feel like that helped to lots of guys. You see people all the time that put beautiful in front of their name, they'll put legendary, all sorts of things, and it, it's just a moniker. It's like, well, I, I just need the moniker. I feel like those type of matches we talk about all the time where hype is reality. And I believe you hanging with those guys, you beating those guys, being in those caliber of matches, it made you where not just the fans, but the guys in the locker room, the guys all over the area and from all the other companies start to look at you and go, wow, you're, you're just like those guys. Right. And you, and you also, unlike a lot of guys, carried yourself like you were already there. You, yeah. you know, weren't going up asking for autographs, asking for pictures. Uh, you know, why, lots why, of why, would like sign? why would I even design anything? I remember that. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Uh, the, that, the, we always make, make the, you know, joke and call back to that day. The first time that I was cocky, son of a bitch, I guess you would say. And, and remember in Richmond, you walk in and there's Jerry Lawler. And like, yeah. the cool thing about it was, like, I knew who Jim White was. But I didn't know that was Jim White sitting next to him in the dressing room. All right. So I remember walking in and there's just a line of wrestlers. And I mean, they've got. You know, rest of this is it. Remember, remember back in the dogs, day, you would have wrestling plastics. licenses. Remember the plastic license you would send? Well, the guys would have, you know, signed the back of the fucking license and he's, you know, signing toys and uh, chairs from like WrestleMania that, you know, whatever. Yeah. Which is cool. I'm not saying, you know, bottom of the boots, inside, whatever. I remember a referee that was supposed to help form the line to, you know, get in for the fans to do their pictures in the ring with Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Uh, Chris was so mad because that referee that formed the line, after he formed the line, he made himself in front of the line, and he was the first guy to get his yeah. picture in the ring with yeah. Jerry Lawler. So I go in, and, and, and if you remember Lawler, <laughs> he, was, he was like, well, what did you bring to sign? What did you bring for the Lawler to sign? And I'll never forget it. I was like, what the fuck would I need him to sign anything? I'm going to have him sign the bottom of my boot with his face. Skullface Records Radio. Hey, I'm Ryan the Lion. If you want to check out me and my music and my new podcast, Nick's Mayhem Music Review, go to Skullface Records. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I walked through there. That's a whole different podcast. 
<laughs> yeah, the fun thing is, is that if you're not a fan of wrestling, how can you truly know what wrestling fans want to see? You give them almost what you want to see. I can tell you who hooked me independent wrestling. I can tell you who hooked me national television wrestling. I remember the that they hooked me. That's good. Uh, the, the obvious, the national television was, I started watching national television wrestling when they were in the and Randy Savage was part of the Mega Powers. We're in the split. Remember Elizabeth was on the on the gurney yeah. going through and, and like Hogan and, and Savage was across. That's Savage where that's Savage. that's where I started watching. You know, my dad would watch NWA and like I don't know what it was. You know, I I could look at it like hey, it's just you know whatever. But like I really remember getting hooked on Hulk Hogan, Savage, Elizabeth. Like that, it, it wasn't anything about how they looked. It wasn't anything about what they, it was just that moment. Of at a very young age. So as I start watching, then you see it oh, like, oh, oh, he, that, 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 you know, I can tell these stories at a young age. Like, you just follow. Oh. And a man, what really hooks me is seeing Hulk Hogan. Wow. All right, you know, he's just your hero saying your prayers. He's like, I'm saying my prayers. I need my vitamins. Oh, God, I want to be a wrestler. You know, everything that goes with it. And man, he hooked me. <sighs> Got me hook, line, and sinker. You know, I love it. I was all playing yeah. You know, I like the ultimate warrior, just the energy, the character. It's so wild. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, I think it was funny. Even, it wasn't even like I couldn't understand as a child, like what they were doing, the wrestling hold for hold, or this, that, and another. But man, just like I wanted to be yeah. that guy. You know, I wanted to be that man that's boom. You know, whatever. Yeah, well, you just, know. just remember that, you know, guys today are all about that work right yeah. And I've got to get my moves in, I've got to get my spots in. Those guys there did little more than cup their ear, shake the ropes, pose, and you were in draw. I was hooked. Yeah. And then, but you all the are. side of the thing is as a child, I told you all these baby face, you know, hooks that I had. Well, as a child, I remember a heel hook, but it was all on the independent scene. And it was in Georgetown, Kentucky. And I was very young, probably six, seven years old. And, and Doug Vines came to the ring. Bro, he had just a regular tank top, blue jeans, and some fucking shoes. And he was just taking his hand, walking to the ring, his hair was wet, and he didn't say a word. And he had everybody in the crowd completely on their feet. And he didn't say a word, that's how he looked at him, that's how he would stop. Well, this is all kind of like shit that I'm scared to death. Because I'm right there, but like I'm, I'm in a hole. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, they're fired up. He's not saying a word. You really appreciate that later in life, especially in what we do. And you realize, like, man, that's, that's, that's amazing that a guy can not say a word and just step out the curtain and have that crowd at the tip of his hands. You know, to me, that's, that's a drill right there. You know? And you remember the moments and the memories. Uh, Steve Austin talks about where he says that. Wrestling is his addiction, but you'll never know the feeling that you get when you're out there because there ain't no drug, there ain't no alcohol, there ain't nothing in this world that's gonna get you like that. And you know, people talk about the Ric Flair. Ric Flair's getting ready to come out of retirement and have his last match again. Well, nobody ever looks in the mirror and goes, that's it, I can't do this anymore. They love it and they live it and they can never imagine the day that it's gotta stop. A lot of people will, but can you imagine the day that you'll have to look in the mirror and go, I, I can't do this anymore? I always tell people when they say, are, are you retired? you stop wrestling? I'll never stop wrestling or be involved in wrestling until my body says, I can't get up and go. And I agree. I agree with that. And, and, and I get this question a lot in the older age, you know. And one of my really good friends is, why aren't you wrapping it up? It's like, oh, I'm not wrapping it up. You know, I just, I'm, I'm smarter about it, you know. And we're older, we're, we're not getting younger, we get smarter. You know, our bodies, as you say, tend to, to hurt a little bit more as we reach the late 30s, early 40s, and we've done this since our teens. You know, I feel like I have plenty of gas left in the tank. You know, I want to make that perfectly clear to anyone that thinks, like, oh, there it be, where it be, you know, I'm only done until I decide that I'm done. You're always done until the next match. Right, right, right. You know, we need you. We can back and forth about it. Like, I can't, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, or whatever, yeah. but my body hurts. I'm, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to cover that up. I'm not going to be like, you know, for whatever reason, I can't let the world know that my body, I'm not going to progress your body fucking hurts. That's just the way it is, you know? But, but I get in there, and I feel like, man, I'm still performing, you know, at 38 years old, far better than I have in my entire life. In my mid twenties, my early twenties, even at the spring chicken teen years, I feel that right now I'm in the very best that I've ever been. So why would I? Well, you know, it's funny you know you say that you're the best at life, you feel the best at life. I know me personally, I didn't feel in my best shape, like workout wise, uh, body wise, until I was thirty years old, and even then, that's why I really first started to like get the professional wrestling the way that I really feel like I should have. Uh, Jim Chadwick always used to tell me, you'll never get it until you get it. And, you know, at, at the age that I met Jim Chadwick, I didn't know what he meant. He's like, well, heck, I know everything about wrestling. I'm an encyclopedia of wrestling. I get wrestling. That's not what he means. Obviously, you can be a fan of professional wrestling. You can even understand professional wrestling a bit, but you can't get to the point where you fully understand until you understand. And I constantly, I still don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I continue to learn. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that's a good segue to the fact that, you know, we talked about all the things that you did in Kentucky and how you weren't uh, happy just, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel, little fish big pump. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm the SRW team, you know, the MWA team. Yeah. You know, great, team. great accomplishments no, no, for you guys. not enough. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, just where are you going to go from there? Yeah, well, yeah. My kids deserve more from, if, if, if I'm giving my life, then, then my kids deserve more. You know, we're going to run out of right now, but I promise you, we're going we're to be happy in a minute. That's yeah. it. And we're, and we're never promised tomorrow. It's every match, you know, everybody would like to think, oh, this next banger I'm going to have is going to be my last match. Any match that you have to be your last match because pro wrestling is very real. The effects on the world. Well, very worthy. That and it also raises the question of like, how do I want my legacy to be like? Do you want do you want to be very good? Like, man, every time I see that guy, he's a fucking baby. Every time he gave his all, like he didn't miss a beat. I just don't want to be one of those guys who you look and you're you know, talking about. Man, that guy was really good in his 20s and even his 30s. And he hit in his 40s, he kind of started skipping the beat a little bit. His step was a slower, you know, his reactions wasn't there, you know. I feel like I, I need to know as good as I can right now, the very day, right now, I'm going to put some shoes on, some boots on. I need to be able to go just as good in my very last one. God, you know, obviously, my injuries or anything like that can change that. But if I run on my way out, if ever my, I'm not saying that my way out is tomorrow, next year, five, ten years. I'm saying my way out, I want to make sure that I can my way out with as good as I was today. Yeah. You know, that's it. And the thing is, we know that when you're challenged, when that box is closing in on you, you've got to work on outside the box. Okay. So, you know, you would already accomplished everything in the time. You had done everything. You had worked on OVW. Worked on all the local companies. You were the top of the MWA. You, at one point, there, you couldn't say the MWA without associating with Larry B and the heavyweight champion. Three years. That's it. a long time. And then it's time for a new change. So a lot of guys in this area, and I'm sure around the world, they look at the IWA mid Souths. They look at the Ring of Honors. They look at all of these work great type companies. And you, know, you can say whatever you want about Ian Rock and IWA and the hardcore stuff. That's not important. What is important is that there is a level that people put that up on, a pedestal they put up on, oh, where you have the CM Punks, the Colt Cabanas, you have all these names, Jimmy Jacobs, Alex Shelley, uh, Petey Williams, all sorts of guys that have came through IWA Mid-South, and that was the next, you know, mountain achievement, the next place that later yeah. you had to go. And well, could you hang? Could and you unexpected at that. Completely unexpected. You know, Todd, uh, Todd Morton hooked that up, man. It was, it was really cool. And, and I met Todd through the Nelson County Fair. We did a little fundraiser for the software that got shot out there during March Day. And, you know, he was like, man, you look like a little pain. You look like a little pain. You look like a bad motherfucker. You're a big baby 
you later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very much. And, and you know, he's really cool because, like, you know, he's in that old school mind frame. I'm, I'm grown up in that old school mind frame. It's like, cool, you know, and he probably looks about me. This young kid's fucking, he's got it. He understands it. He's fucking old school. I'm, I'm sure the first time he went in there, they're thinking, okay, this guy's from Kentucky. He's yeah. going to bring the arm real well. He's going to be a good heel. But they're probably not expecting that they're going to get that work hard. Right. Well, you know, like, the, the funny thing about different levels of Kentucky and wrestling and admissions is, you know, they don't know who the fuck I am. HWA, but, but, but if I was at OVW, then, oh, that's fucking, that's, that's, that's like, great, he's he's the OVW, you know? So, they well, don't know me, but. You went from Hulk Hogan to Horace Hogan. I went from, you know, now on the indies of all these little hard working, like, you're the man, like, you're, you're, you're there. Yeah, they're blowing, they they they're blowing you up at that point. Yeah, well, Todd knew what happened. to go to Kentucky boy right there, so he evidently knew who I was, and I was saying that, that this and that, and I was saying that, and regardless, What's going on and, and, and everything, and all that, whatever. I can say that and go to IWA was the turning of my career. Uh, I'm thankful that I got to go and work under people like Todd. I'm glad that I got to work under people like Bull Lane. I'm glad that I got to meet people like John Bidwell and Bill Lane. You know, the, the Jay Chris, my man, you know, uh, I, I, all of that led up to. TPI, and then there was, there was, there's no fucking Larry D. Everyone wants to be a part of TPI. It's you're either at the IWA, there's your hardcore blood and guts, I want to rip your fucking arm off. Or you're some of the best wrestlers out there. You're some of the best wrestlers out there. What's great about the IWA is that they mix them together and make magic. You know, he, like Ian, back to Ian, Ian, Ian had whatever go on here recently and then passed, but I can say that. You know, I can be thankful to him for that, yes. This is Skullface Records Radio. <laughs> Subscribe and share Skullface Records slash YouTube. To follow all your favorite podcasts. Pitfalls and Power Chords. Starring Nick Himes and Michael Lynn Watkins. That One Time on Bandcamp. Starring. Ronnie Kenner and Nick Hines. But something that you touched on that really piques my interest is that you met and had matches with Jake and Dave Chris. Yes. With, with uh, the guys. You know, they, they would go on to impact wrestling as OB. Uh, and that right there got you into Rockstar. Uh, and Rockstar kind of leads into what we're talking Monster about. Tonight. Rockstar. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, talk about how meeting those guys, uh, meeting the Ohio crew, what you did in Indiana, leading you to Ohio, and the stuff you did in Dayton, Ohio that led you to the eyes of impact wrestling. Well, you know, it started. It started there by me with Jay Chris, who was the uh, owner of Rockstar Pro. And myself, he and Aaron Lee was in the for match, and he didn't know me. I say, I knew he was very good. And like, when you went to the IWA locker room, you know, this ain't no, you know, <laughs> match number one, or this ain't Willie the Beach Town from, you know, Lawrenceburg. That's, you know, this is the real deal. These guys know what the fuck they're doing. And Jake Chris was a guy that was very quiet, always respectful, but never was very quiet. So we would shake hands and walk by. It never really worked. I didn't really, I think he respected me, I respected him, but we like, didn't really know each other. And we got to work together, and man, it was like, I can go back and watch the definitiveness in the end, it's him, myself, and Aaron Williams. And he did call that on. Man, I, 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 I knew they like 
to me, I, I looked at it and said to myself, right? So I mean, I'm out of Kentucky and close to my state line. Well, it is at the time. I was like, what? Well, and I become a big dog there, you know? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Yeah, and, uh, you know, I went on to that, and thankfully they have a smart marks up there, so I got a little party like that. They knew who I was, you know? But man, they put me so perfect. I, I remember he told me one time, he said, anybody that comes to Rock Song Pro on the first statue, when they come in, they always lose. Yeah. He said, I got one exception. And that guy's like, you need He said, there you go. The guys that ever come in, yeah. it just starts counting. That, that's a lot. So much. So that's good. That's why, I love, that's why I love Jay Chris so much. I'm so thankful that I got to know Jay so thankful that I got to see his ride. Like he, he made a rise. Like when he got his deal, it's just me and I remember being so happy for him. And like you know, our friendship alone was worth the day trip, you know. Uh, and, and just I, I'm very blessed to know that Chris is on my side. I also have a love for this so much. That's why we know him so much. Just like him. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, yeah, he's very underrated. And he, yeah. he, he, the thing is, he is very. Uh, touted as a very good professional wrestler. So imagine how good he actually is, and I'm saying he's, like, he's so versatile. Like, you know, he's so, he can wrestle a whole whole John Damn. They can go out there with John and Murdoch and lead all over the place. They just don't see the You know, that's, you can't help it. You can't help it. It's respect for him. His father is very close to him. You know, just all her with that. Yeah, I mean, the, you had classics with all the guys that, you know, Ohio, Indiana area consider some of the best. So you were in there with Aaron Williams. You were in there with Chuck Chris. Anybody and everybody that they consider the top guy, they went through Larry B. Larry B. maybe went through them to prove that he was just as good, if not better, than some of them. They was proven. They was proven. Yeah. So you had a lot to prove. They was, and, and, and someone like me was expected to go be a good hand, expected to have a great attitude, and just be, yes sir, you know. I can recall you being in the car. I rode you sometimes, sometimes you go by yourself. It's always bad traffic, it's always rain, like whatever bad conditions you can think of, that was going to date to go to Rockstar. I can also remember you like, just sometimes just crying in the car. Uh, just because you didn't want to have, you know, you didn't want to see your kids. Uh, it was you. very, like, it was tough until, you know, my thank, thankfully my ex-wife, Amanda, and I have been so cordial and silly that we don't have to step through the court for a long time. We've been our 10 plus years, you know, and it was to the point that, you know, we were on a rotating schedule. You know, this Wednesday and Thursday, they're with me. Next Wednesday and Thursday, we're either on a rotating schedule. Um, but that meant every other Wednesday and Thursday, I had to work from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, be home, shower, see the kids for 15 minutes just to get on the road and go to Dayton, Ohio, you know, and then come back and be about to go to the morning, Thursday morning, just to wake up, go to work 7 to 3, shower at 3, and even at 5, it's a little bit closer, so now I've got an hour and so I had about an hour and a half on the whole day. It's a very, uh, very hard. Biggest 
part of it is that you can't tell So, you know, well, you can. You can, but, you know, at the time, it's like, I can't, you know, I'm not going to go to the next level. They, they, they think that I'm mentally broken because of this, because I'm going to grow so much, and I'm mentally broken. How am I going to make it to the next level if I can't handle this? So, you know, I, I hit a lot inside that. I hit that, that car, that red dodge, man. That's my, that, I've got a lot of memories in there. Yeah. I can remember only twice in the entire time, and I've known them for a long time. I was in high school, we were friends that are friends, friendly, who we weren't friends until, you know, when they ended up in my in Manchester, I can remember there was, I used to always ride the show with Bob and And I remember one night, it was something that hit me, it was like, hey, you guys want to bar tonight? <laughs> I knew you didn't do it in there. I knew you guys were going to the bar. Like, no. You guys are going to the bar? Like, yeah, man, you want to come? <laughs> and uh, from there, we started the journey that has a uh, lot less closer than, you know, they say that, you know, blood makes your friends. I don't believe that because you're my brother. I love you very much and you've been through a lot. And uh, twice in the entire time I've ever known you, have I ever believed you when you told me that? You know, we were, we were good. We weren't going to do this anymore. And uh, I don't know how much you know. I don't know what your wife is there. We weren't going to do it anymore. We weren't going to do it We've given up on wrestling and this stuff. And I remember around this time here, I was starting to work. I talked about the little book, doing these gaming trips, making an idea to get as many towns as possible, just trying to make that next level. I remember you telling me multiple times, I can't get a new issue. If by the end of this year, I haven't done something to make it to the next level, I can tell I'll stop two days away from shutting down. It's crazy. They just think there's an alternate world somewhere where uh, you, you quit and you get an ice cream shop somewhere. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> my back hurt so much and my knees hurt so much. And I was so, I was so, uh, I don't know, like, I feel like I've always been in good shape. You know, I knew I, I knew I was heavy, I knew I was big, but I felt like I was always in good shape. But I feel like I never took advantage of chiropractor or I never took advantage of, you know, vitamins and I never took advantage of, you know, joint, you know, anything that you need to do, exercise regular. I never, you know, I, I did on and off, you know, obviously, but, you know, I, as far as that time, when it was like, boy, this hurts so bad. I mean, I, you can lie to yourself and say, well, man, I've done everything that I can. But until you can look in the mirror and realize, I've not done everything. And it took, it took me getting, you know, the contract from Impact and knowing, like, man, I can make a living. I, I can quit welding. I can quit, quit welding and, and work out at the gym and, and, and be that employee, you know? Face Records Radio. is playing real instruments where everyone is streaming invisible movies we fight back one podcast one record label bringing you physical media let's talk cassette tapes vinyl vhs laser disc betamax let's talk physical not invisible only at the Splatacasta Massacre podcast on Skullface Records Radio. Not just any 
down the uh, impact roster. You have an impact heavyweight championship matchup. It's the main event of the show, and you're facing a guy that we all know as, you know, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Morrison. At that time, he was known as Johnny Impact, and he was the impact heavyweight champion. And here you are in the main event. Rockstar Pro and Impact Wrestling, they're joined together. One big show, it's Impact Open Day. And it's an opening day for Larry D. To get one out of the park, how do you think you did? What was going through your mind? I, I was scared. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, this shit's kind real, right? Uh, I didn't know. I knew that Johnny Impact was coming. I knew that I was on the show, but I never thought that I would get the call and say, hey, hey, Larry. You always seem to get that call, whether it's Chris Hayes going, hey, how'd you like to work the key? Yeah, yeah, right. How'd you like to work the business? They got to sit down and going, hey, you want to you just work this match with John I wish, I wish that I was prepared, uh, but I'm not, I'm not chiseled, but I, I wish I was more prepared physically, and, 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 and I wish that we could have really got, we got down, but like, I feel like me physically, as athletic as I was at 350 pounds, I would love to wrestle with Johnny Impact at 300, 295, you know. Uh, but we went there and he was a star man. Like at that time. He'd he been, been everywhere. And at that point, he'd already been yeah. all over the world. I mean, he was done with the WWE. He won tough enough. You go to many locker rooms and you see guys, they're like boys, you know, we're all. But that one guy that, that just walks in, you can't he's be a star. You know that he's a star. Johnny Impact. Man, I remember he was at the first table and it's like, oh, it's hand, do I, you know, hey man, how are you? And all this, that, and other. And you're just waiting for the law dog to come up. Yeah. Shot that Johnny Axe spirit. Hey man, what'd you get signed? Everyone else is over there. And all this shit. Yeah. I'm just sitting there, just waiting in the chair. Just like this. And, and I'll never forget this man. Fucking uh, Nick Bro Butcher. I got really good with him. I could do a whole podcast on him. Uh, but we got to become really good friends. But he didn't know me. Like, he didn't really pay attention to me. Yeah. But what made him pay attention to me was he walked by and he goes, You're not a fucking mark. <laughs> and he's like, Look at all these other motherfuckers around here, slapping their legs, grabbing, pointing out their little cartoon that they're going to do in front of the people. He was like, You're getting ready to wrestle. Impact Wrestling, World Heavyweight Champion on live pay per view, and you're sitting there like it don't fucking matter. And he's like, that's the man that should go to the next level and I hope you earn a job. Or whatever he said, like, and from there we would become really good friends. And the impact that he's on me, obviously, is still years later. Did you think that that was the night? Did you think, hey, I'm here with the champion, there's no way that I'm going to sit there and think that's it? Sign. Like, those people believe. And that's, that's the art of a great professional wrestler, is that if you're at a house show or you're at an event like that, you probably know the impact title isn't going to change hands. Those people will leave. The first, first time, time you're going to change. The first time that I was on impact programming was the, the Iowa, my Iowa debut for Revolver. And I never stepped foot in there. And I'm oh my gosh, it's an impact. You know, it's a uh, collab. Is it even worse when you're right there and 
they're still not buying? Like, you were sure. at the finish line with Jane Cross? Yeah, you know, it's on top of like, you know, I had a, I had, I had a match with the world champion. He's got all the power of the world with me. He, after the match, he came back. I was at five the minutes. Yeah. Five yeah. minutes later, he was like, man, I'm going to shoot. He was like, I was fucking awesome. You're the man. He was like, you are the man. Like, I, I was humble. Like, what? A fucking Johnny Impact telling me this. You know, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that I, I'm going to be a job call. Yeah, he knows what he is. Yeah, before that. Like, 
And this is with all due respect. It's like, I know I can perform at the next level. I'm not saying, I know I can perform at that point. It's like, I know. You know, and I'm not a shot at it. You're not a shot at anyone else. But I know that I was just as good as the man that got the deal. And to be in the at that time, I was like, I'm better. You know, that's not, not, a, not a knock. That's just how I felt. And if, any, if AC didn't feel he's better than me, then he didn't need that contract. You know what I'm saying? You should feel that you are better. And that should piss you off. It make you work that much harder. And it did. I pushed that little much more because I was like, you made me say And you heard that crowd. Yeah. Sign Larry D. Well, I felt, Sign Larry D. I felt that they had made a mistake since I was. I feel like if, if, if I had a hook, like let me be me. Let me be Larry D. And let me hook that crowd the way that I know Larry D can hook that crowd, and we would be going. You know, but I can't be mad. I'm not. I'm not mad at all. It's just, you know, in a perfect world, if I if I were to write the book, if I were to tell the story of where I went, then I would. I wish I would have got to be me. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know. What well, about it? Was it the was the end of the road? I'm sure at that point there. What were you thinking? Were you thinking like, okay, they didn't sign me against Johnny. Inside now here the guy is, he's coming out here, he signs my opponent. What do you think? That's it. I'll go home and I'm done with this. I'll keep not I'm I never I couldn't take no for an answer. I've done work too hard, I've done went too far. I've done gave up too much. I've done cry tears. I've done seen my kids cry tears. I've done arguing with my wife, my fiance, about being gone. And, and they understood, but they, you know, you can't really understand unless it's you in the mix of like, man, I'm almost there. I know, I know that there's a better life if I just stick going. You know, I, I know if I just tough it out. Just, my, my dad put that in. You know, I, I, I'm almost there. I can feel it. A lot of really uh, big guys there. You know, we mentioned their names. There was Jake. There's Dave. There's Sammy. All sorts of guys there that are pushing hard. They're talking to Scott and they're saying, like, Larry D, man, what about Larry D? Uh, tell me about the relationship with those guys and how it felt that they're pushing and they're pulling and they want you there as bad as you want to be there. Oh, man, it was great. I never imagined that, you know, Sammy Gallahan or, or even Rich Swan, you know, uh, although Carl Anderson, I remember, you know, he, he, was, he was big on me. And, and, and you never imagined this guy would put you over the way that they do, but... It's just a, a very difficult process of, I know this anytime. Anytime I'm going to get that text. Anytime I'm going to get that call. Anytime. And if, when it, the, the thing that mentally fucks with you is when that call don't come and then you still go to said shows and you know that you're out there rocking it. Yeah. You know. So then we come to December 7th and it is the No Surrender Impact of the heads. Yeah, it's Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. It was the Wrestling Revolver and Impact. They were another special. And, you know, this time, maybe you're not in that main event. Maybe you're not working for the title. But they're putting you in a pretty good situation because you're facing a guy that you're very familiar, familiar with. And you've had great matches with him. You've uh, worked with the IWA, uh, Rockstar, all over the place. You've had matches with him. And that was Michael Elgin. And it was a chance for you to get in there and show what you could do against Michael Elgin in front of Impact in the world. Well, originally I was in the Hall Scramble, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was okay. And, like, I feel like this is it. This is my last ditch. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, if my back's hurting, you know. I wasn't even booked on that revolver show. Let's be honest. I was not even booked. And it was at the time where Sammy was like, hey, man. I'll try to get wherever, but like they're just not feeling there's, there's nothing creatively for you. Not. So anyway, I thought, well, fuck it. If anything else, I can get back on the on the stream and you know maybe somebody gets fired, maybe you know maybe I'll do some kind of like tope or some kind of moon salt or some kind of fucking yeah. something destroyer to impress someone, whatever it might be. Even if they, even if they, I could have hit all of them. Yeah, you were gonna show up there. You know, that's the silliest thing. That Oh, uh, but, okay, I'm in the Hoss bag, I'm in the Hoss scramble, scrambles was my thing from that first match in the nuts. Um, but anyway, 
Then a week before, or four days before, it's like, I'm tagging this impact wrestling technique. No surrender. No offense to Mike, but man, he's so good. But like, we we have what you see are good matches are like to me. It's like I could have done this better. It's that, you know, it's just he's sometimes very, he's very, very good. good. Very all over the place. I'm more of like a natural on the fly. We're gonna, I know our bullet points, and then we'll get there. But he's very, he's one of the best in the world, you know. And I I, I botched. I'm not, I can't lie to you from a, the the first opening spot until I botched, and he was. He, you, you can see him walking me around. I, I, I'm not going to lie to nobody about that, you know. Uh, the man, the man uh, is supposed to pop up, bomb, Larry, and we come back to, you know, we get on track, we're not on track. You know how you are. Fuck, I can't get on right track. Right. It good view. Yeah, because it's like, they, they've told you there's nothing there. This is your last shot. You are, you're fucked. You're not, you're done. You just shut it down. Anyway. Here we are. Uh, man, fuck. Thank God this master's over. I've been, I've been embarrassed myself. And it's like, oh, here we go. Kick out. Huh? Kick the fuck out. Wham! All of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit. Larry, 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 fuck. You know, whatever. And here we are again. Oh, bam! I'm like, now I'm going to be rocking. I'm sure he was pissed, probably, you know. Yeah. He was giving some nice shot with Larry. He's going to stay down. Yeah. And then, boom, um, here he comes. I'm like, thank God. And he's like, one, kick out, two, <laughs> There it is, you know. Here you look like a beast. Oh, kick out of his big Yeah, man. And like, what the fuck? And people are going nuts today. You know, they're nuts. And it's like, oh, come on, fuck it. To hear that and another. He rocks me with me. Shit, he was pissed when I played him in like that. One, two, three. And he was gone very quickly. And I sell them. I'll, I'll never forget it, like laying there. Slayer, and he was just in a pool of like embarrassment. Like, but the whole time, the crowd was there. Sign lady. Yeah, like, Sign lady. Crawl up this, you know, crawl up this buckle. Not even sell it. This is real. Yeah. And pulling yourself like, I just want to like, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm already in this hole with my fucked up, I'm yeah. shit in the bed, and uh, I look up and there's Scott Memorial. Now you know the people are going crazy. Yeah, so, but, but even then I was oblivious, like, nah, you know, uh, he's probably here. So he's like, yeah, he's here. He's yeah, yeah. saying, fuck, stop asking me to come work, and I'm not going to sign you. Yeah. You've shit the bed here tonight, but in front of the people, I can't, you know. But, you know, I. It's really the coolest moment of my wrestling career, though, I'll be honest. It is, you know, like, hey, you need a man, I'll play around over here. I don't know whatever he just said, you yeah. know. That was really cool. It was like, a man, I worked my whole life. It's like those day trips with a crowd on, you know, all that thing. And like, my life has changed, you know. And, and I knew I still had to work on it. I knew I was meant to be on that next level. Now I just got to prove it. Now I got to get there and be the best employee that I can be. We do what's asked, you know. So, and I went to Detroit the next day and it was off to the races with it. Back. Hey, there it is. But, I mean, how does it feel? You finally, Scott Moore, yeah, he told you, like, yeah, Larry, you need a bigger playground. And then right there, everything that you've been working for, every, that next level or that imaginary brass ring, whatever it is, that glass ceiling, you bust through and now you're signed. To impact wrestling, wife's there. Uh, they let the wife sit in the car. She's in the car. She's in the car. She's in the car. She's in the car. You're yeah. sitting there, you're holding each other. Yeah, those people are going nuts. Well, they're so genuinely invested in you. And they're, it's, not a, it's not like a synthetic moment or correct moment. It's a like real moment where, as happy as you are, they're happy for you. Well, here's the thing, man. It's like a lot of those like contracts, like, they're, 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 all, they're already determined. You know, like my never. I was like, yeah. mine was completely not talked about. The last I heard was you know, employment with impact was there was nothing created for me. And you know, that crowd was nuts. It was the coolest shit ever. It really was, man. And, like I remember embracing with Paige and all that man like, man, this is crazy. Like, you know, this is cool. And I remember going 
finally, everything you work for culminates in that. Have you been signed? Is it a, is it a relief? Like, has the weight now fallen off your shoulder? Because I know you, and it's not like, okay, I've been signed, now it's time to settle. Now I know you. It's like, work out harder, get better at night, give them everything Larry. Well, yeah, I mean, they've invested in me, yeah. you know, and I'll never, the most embarrassing was like, man, I had this new gear, it was $400, $500 for them, whatever. And man, I had this charm on that. Oh, this looks awesome. I'm look real tough. Here we are, and I hit the hard hand pose, and my child belt just pops off of my stomach, right? Those guys, this is their life now. And I knew it got double tough on me because I still had to work and weld, and I still had to get in the gym, and I still had to keep up with the uh, impact wrestling as well as upper ending dates now. I knew I knew that people were going to start looking at me more frequently at a high rate of money than I'm used to. And that alone makes it worth you know, pushing the extra harder. Yeah, well, you know, you talked about you know, the next day there, they need you to go to the second Detroit. Uh, well, we had a, like a bank hack or a credit card, something that went through that, that took all of our money. So we had zero dollars. I borrowed $50 from my dad. Uh, Here you are, I'm going to impact your dreams. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you got zero money. You got zero money and I have to borrow $50 from my dad. And you can't call him and just be like, hey, man, can I have right. so so I go up there. Sure. I go up there and, and I'm expecting to come back. The, the sitter's expecting us to, you know, be there that night. Yeah. And then I'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> they need me in Detroit tomorrow. What the fuck am I going to do? And then I go and I overdraw my car. For a hundred dollar room, and you know, I overdraw my car for fifty dollars of gas, and then you know, food. Everything was a thirty dollar hit every time, you know, and it ended up going really negative. And then this was a Sunday, and I remember driving back on a negative, had nothing, and then drove straight from Detroit, made it home at five fifteen in the morning, got my work clothes on, and went to work the, that Monday morning. And there's, what are you doing here? We figured. You would have quit now that you're trying to wrestle the on track. And, you know, six months, I didn't get to quit. And I proved to the motherfuckers that you can't quit. And I can't quit. Yeah. How did it change your life from the wrong? I mean, obviously, you said, you know, you quit your job. Uh, you I even start living your dream. But overall, how did it change you uh, for the better or for the worse? Oh, in my life, 100%. I can't sit here and say that. Uh, this was all Larry D, this was all Larry Jones, you know, this, this was not. Uh, my wife, bless her heart, we've been through so much, and uh, we we had the idea, like, man, like, you know, at the time I was making, I was working 40 hours per week, and standing on concrete, lifting all this shit up for after taxes and insurance, I bring $537.37 on a week. Yeah, you were a welder who was sidelined as a professional. Right. Where it's like, well, wait a minute, I can make my month's worth of wages in one weekend. Not just a week, you know, in one weekend, you know, I can make a month's worth of wages in one weekend. And then when I started doing that every weekend, I'm, I don't really need quality, you know. Uh, but Paige stepped up to the plate because now the COVID starts to add up. I was making, you know, 2000 a week probably. And then, uh, it dropped down with COVID, so she jumped up and got her job, and man, she, she kept us afloat during the tough times, and uh, I'll always be grateful for her, and uh, we, we rocked this shit together, man, and I can't be more happy to have her by my side. I'm proud as my tag team partner, man. I thought I was your tag team partner. Well, no. Uh, I got you. I mean, we're like wrestling I'm life partners. Sure. I mean, I'm not sure you were like that. No. That's going to close 2019. That's going to close your journey into Impact Wrestling. That's the road to, you know, you want to get signed, you're signed. You are now a member of Impact Wrestling. And that closes 2019. That journey starts in 2020. Uh, you show up in March. But 
That's a story for another day. We just wanted to get hey, the one to my top year, man. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about it. There's going to be a lot to talk about, and I think we cover that next week in yeah. part two. Larry D makes an impact. Yes, sir. Before we leave tonight, we got a few questions from the fans. Are you ready to answer anything? I, I, I went out there and I told the fans, ask Larry D anything, and I've got a few questions okay. for you right now. So the first question that I have for you from the fans. This is an anonymous question, actually. How did it feel you've made this journey to Impact Wrestling? I feel like we'll cover a lot of this next week, but since it was asked, I want to see what your answer is. You got to Impact Wrestling, and you're thinking, okay, hey, Larry D has made it. And you get there, and it's not like they just strap a rocket to you. It's not just this big singles run for Larry D. Instead, they see you as a tag team with Ace Romero. How did it feel getting uh, you know, put into a tag team? And you know, it may not have been the vision that you had, but it's the vision that they had. Well, I mean, to me, it was like awesome. I was like, shit, let's do it, let's roll. You know, I mean, obviously, I, I feel like I wanted to be a singles wrestler. I was expecting, okay, I'll be a singles wrestler. Uh, but just to be a part of it in general was amazing. It's like, wow, what, what, what could I bitch about at that point? Let's be real. It's like. People, people work their whole careers to sign the national television contract. I got to do that. Why would I go in and bitch because they throw me in a tag team? You know? Alright, so Hayden had a few questions. Oh, wow. He actually strung them all together. Okay. Uh, Hayden Redman, I'm okay. sure that you know. Shout out Hayden. That's it. And he had a few questions for you. He wants to know, what is the best state that you've ever traveled to? Uh, I'm assuming he means in professionalness. Well, you know, uh, I really feel like Washington was a lot of fun. Uh, just because that's more of a page thing, and you know, this is sounds hunky or you know, whatever. But I feel like you know, she deserves trips like that because of all the other shit that we went through to get to the the crap hoes and all these back road towns, where most women get to go on these big wine fancy you know cruises and this. You know, we're driving back roads, staying in a cheap ass hotel. I, I how many yeah. nights I've been with you, and you said, look at the towns I've got you. You did, and and that's true. But man, when we Seattle, I feel like she really uh, got to, you know, this was her vibe. You know, we had a nice place, nice hotel, uh, and, and she enjoyed it. And, and it was just one of those, like, hey, I like this. So uh, I just like to go to the places that she enjoys. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like it's her, my give back to her that, that we get to eat places that we normally wouldn't get to eat at home. And, you know, we get to stay in nice hotels at times. And she's very simple uh, to please, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who is your favorite opponent? Shit. And I'm going to add to that, and why? Man, I got so many. I mean, I think that I, think that, that I would have to say Jake Chris. Uh, because we, we, we don't know. It doesn't matter the size of the crowd, but it matters the quality of the match. He time. really is a fire starter because y'all's yeah. matches are going to be fire. And, and I feel like Aaron Lee. Uh, that we make some magic together. Yeah, yeah. we had Aaron in for uh, you know our seminar camp, yeah. and I've never seen anybody just walk through the motions with trainees yeah. and students and make them look so technically sound. I think it's a fucking, as Aaron Williams, he's so good that he can wrestle himself. I think it's a fucking shame that Aaron, that Aaron Williams is not designed. Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. he's so talented. Yeah, shout out to Aaron Williams. Uh, and you answered this question here. Uh, Ryan had a question for you, which was, uh, what inspired you to become a professional wrestler? Uh, you know, you already kind of talked about that during the podcast, seeing Hogan, seeing the Warriors, seeing those matches, and, you know, also, you, know, you talked about your dad. I'd like you to touch on your dad just a little bit more and how he made you the person you are today, because I know that that's something that really means a lot to you. It's not wrestling related, but he drove you to be the man you are, and that's what led you to be the wrestler. Yeah, I mean, it's the same story, different different uh, job field. Uh, I remember my dad was always gone, and you know, he worked six days a week and set up at the flea market on Sundays, and that's when we got to see him. You know, he dropped us off at school. And, and I remember getting extremely hurt and upset because I didn't I wanted to spend so much time with my dad. And, and I didn't really get to spend a lot of time with him. I mean, it wasn't a terrible day, he's a great dad. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, great he's, my, he's my fucking hero. And, and uh, you know, now, 20 years later, I missed a lot, you know, of, of being with him. And now that 
I'm blessed enough to not have to do that clock in and that. And I get a lot more time with him, and I get to talk to him four or five times a day on the phone. And he, you know, outside of Carter and everything, you know, it's just that's my guy. You know, that's my rock. I'm so I can't, I can't imagine not talking to him. Every day. I love that. Last question is from Steve, and I think that you're going to answer this one very well. What advice would you give to any aspiring professional wrestler? What advice would you give to somebody that wants to be a wrestler or a manager, wants to get into the business? Decide if you want to do it. I mean, don't, don't, don't halfway decide you want to do it. It's like, you know, you either, you're the first one to invest money, down payments and monthly fees and everything that goes with training school. And then, then you go so far and then you just quit. That's the problem. If you're going to do this, do it. Show up to class, be respectful, be humble. Don't, don't think that you got it figured out. No, when we say less is more, less is more. Give me a plug before we leave on your uh, social media accounts. Uh, talk about the school, talk about the bar. Let them know where they can find everything Larry D. You can find uh, Legend of Larry D on Twitter. You can find me at Larry Jones on Facebook. I don't have no kind of secondary Facebook. But, you know, what you see is what you get, man. I mean, I think that's what got me over. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't have no bullshit around, you know, I'll show you my family, I'm a family man. Uh, you can find me, I don't really mess with Instagram, and, you know, same stuff. Uh, you can find Legends Bar and Events up here in Cynthia, Kentucky. It's a great world for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 4 in the afternoon until midnight, 4 in the afternoon until 1. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere you want, you know, I'm not that hard to get a hold of, you know. Uh, if you want to book me for an appearance or a match, you can find me, uh, book me at email, uh, email booklarryd at gmail.com. Uh, let's just pro wrestling academy, man. I love teaching pro wrestling. If you want to be a pro wrestler, please reach out. It's not just me. It's me and Max here. We, we really take pride in, in trying to uh, rise the next crop, should you say. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, please reach out to me directly. Reach out to Max directly. Email us Legends Pro Wrestling Academy at gmail.com or simply send us a uh, message to our Facebook page. That's it. Right. They can start their journey today. It becomes a reality. Train twice a week, man. That's it, man. And they can become everything legendary. I got love all right, that concludes this journey, but the journey is far from over. Tune in next week. Me, Max, and a mic. Episode 2, Larry D. Makes an Impact. Join us over on Facebook at the Me, Max, and a Mic podcast page. You already heard of where to hit Larry D. up. Come see me, Mr. Everything Max Slid. Max Slid over on Facebook. Everything Slid over on Twitter. More importantly, tune in, share, like, follow. Do whatever you got to do. We've got a vlog that appears on the podcast page. We've got the podcast coming up. You don't want to miss an episode. Me, Max, and a mic. This right here. Making an impact.